Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is Richard Goldberg, Senior Advisor at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Richard, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me back. Of course, as you and I sit here right now, we are almost three months from Hamas's attack on Israel on October 7th. So where are they in terms of arriving at a new hostage deal that releases the hostages? Well, right now, uh, Hamas's days are numbered and uh, they don't have a lot going for them other than the hostages as leverage over the Israelis. And so we have seen over the last couple of weeks, even though Israel has tried to broker some sort of additional deal through Egypt uh, and even the Qataris uh, supposedly playing some sort of role, uh, we have not seen Hamas come forward with any deal that Israel could accept. Uh, what they've said so far reportedly is they would consider tranches of hostages in exchange for one month ceasefires uh, that would roll into another month and another month. So in other words, basically saying the war has to end and then they would think about uh, releasing hostages. Now that might change as uh, Israel gets deeper and deeper into southern Gaza, closer to where some of these leaders might be hiding. Uh, the killing of the number three in command who was operating out of Beirut uh, is certainly going to get the attention of Hamas leaders, uh, understanding that Israel is looking at a list of Hamas leaders and working down that list, trying to uh, eliminate all Hamas leaders, uh, including in Gaza and those that live outside of Gaza as well. Uh, but I think until Hamas leaders come to that conclusion that they are up against the wall in their final moments, uh, they may not play the hostage cards until then. Let's talk about that because you bring up an interesting point. Hamas's days are numbered. Can you explain why? Is that because earlier this week we did see a top Hamas leader killed in Beirut? Uh, it's mostly because of the IDF advances inside Gaza itself. Uh, the Israeli uh, defense forces have moved uh, quite uh, through northern Gaza, taking control of a vast amount of areas that were previously controlled by Hamas and now uh, destroying a lot of the tunnel infrastructure uh, we've seen in the news uh, throughout Gaza City and some of the northern areas above Gaza City. Uh, but more importantly now, they are advancing deep into southern Gaza and central Gaza, including the number two city in Gaza, uh, called uh, Han Yunus, uh, where the leaders uh, of uh, Hamas's military wing are believed to be hiding out. Many hostages uh, may be hidden there as well. And so as Israel continues to move deeper and deeper into Khan Yunus, the same way it did in northern Gaza, that means that uh, Hamas's remaining command and control will now be subject to targeting. And once that is eliminated, uh, Hamas's leadership, uh, their infrastructure, their hideouts, their tunnels, are vastly destroyed, uh, they will quickly lose control of the Gaza Strip. Uh, and once that happens, uh, you will be able to see mass surrenders potentially uh, from the mid and lower levels, uh, negotiations start potentially for Hamas members who want to leave Gaza in exchange for their lives uh, remaining, uh, hostage deals, things like this. So, uh, so long as the Israeli military continues its advance deeper into central and southern Gaza and resists calls to stop that advance, uh, Hamas's days will surely be numbered.